Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining us at Wi-Fi Design Day. And thank you very much for selecting my breakout session on custom report templates. Uh, my name is Nick Turner. You guys can see that one. Uh, my job title today at Ekahau is self-appointed authority on report templates. Uh, I change my job title regularly. Um, you can contact me officially, nick at ekahau.com. I'm also on Twitter, Nick J.V. Turner. And I do also have a blog, which is not Ekahau related, and that's at nickjvturner.com. So here's the agenda. Who is this guy? Uh, I've worked in the wireless industry for, I think, around six or seven years. Uh, I worked in the UK for uh, two value-added resellers before joining Ekahau. And uh, I now have been with Ekahau for two years. I joined uh, in 2016. Uh, I live in the UK on the south coast. And so I'm not well placed for international travel. I uh, wear out the M3 uh, on the way up to Heathrow quite regularly. Uh, and yeah, now I work for Ekahau. And uh, whilst, whilst trying to do pre-sales and post-sales engagement with customers, I also enjoy playing with report templates. Primarily because it's, some, it's a feature of the Ekahau tool set that when I was a customer of Ekahau's, I found very useful and was able to uh, leverage it to save lots of my time. So then we're going to do the Slido poll. So you saw that some, some votes are coming in, which is great. Um, and then we're going to start off with a, a brief, warm and fuzzy, friendly demo of report templates. So that's going to act as a nice, warm intro to you know, just show you what, what you can do and what's easy with report templates. My WLPC presentation, I think I started off a little bit hot on the uh, report templates. And hopefully, I didn't scare too many people off. We're like, look at all the things you can do. Look, you just need to do this code here. And you take this piece of it and copy and paste. And you do this. And then, and then like, boom, you get a, like, a report template at the end of it. And uh, some of the feedback I got from that was, you made that look very complicated. So that's what the brief, warm, fuzzy, friendly bit's going to be. And then the main event will go with whatever topics you guys are interested in. You guys have already done this. I've given you two votes on Slido. Right. So at the moment, Slido poll looks like this. So everybody, really? You had to go for that one? That's like the, <laughs> that's the one that's most likely to fail during the demo, OK? <laughs> but OK, that's great. And if you, do, if you do have any questions, you, of course, can ask by putting your hand up and shouting at me. Yes? Perfect. Thank you. 45 minutes from now. from now. Perfect. Thank you. If you, uh, if you enjoy attention, put up your hand and ask your question publicly. If you would rather keep, you know, be quiet and shy, then you can either anonymously ask your question through Slido or uh, put your name on there. And that way, I'll know who you are. All right. So we're going to start off with the basics of custom report templates. When you have an Ekahau project file, let's open up a project. And we will go with a fictional place called Badger Key. So this is a site survey. It has been, I walked the, the, these, uh, I walked this path. Uh, this is a marina. I was obviously a little bit optimistic, optimistic when I made this floor plan, because I was like, yeah, I'm going to survey the whole area. Uh, no, I didn't. It was too big. Uh, but this is a marina. So let's just switch the visualization off for a second. And you can see there are the boats. So I walked up and down the pontoons to collect this data for demonstration purposes. And when we want to produce report material, generally speaking, there are three options. <clears throat> Option one. Export image. We've all done this. It takes the canvas as it looks right now. So you pick a file format. You pick a destination. So it's going to end up. Uh, let's just sling this one out on the desktop. You give it a file name. Bam. And whatever view options you have 
inside Eckenhower right now, that's what your image is going to look like, I hope. Pretty good. Everybody happy with that? It's what we saw inside our project. But that's fairly labor intensive, and I'm not going to want to do this for lots of images. So then the second option that we have for reporting is the one-click report. Let's have a show of hands. Who here has used the one-click report in Ekahau? Do you like the one-click report? Does it address some of the questions that you want? Some yes, some no? Yeah? It's quick and easy, yes. It's very generic and bland, right, as well. Uh, the the, the, the one-click report is good because I can, with very little effort, bash out a report document that includes many of the visualizations I care about from my project. But I don't necessarily want to can that over to my customer because it's generic and bland, right? I mean, in some scenarios it's appropriate, in others less so. So the one-click report, you know this, pick your bands, pick your floors, pick your paper size, and then we can pick and choose which chapters we want to see included. And it's from this starting point that I want to look at the custom report templates. Because if we were to run the one-click report on my project here, the Badger key, what we, what we get is this report document. So all of, most of the key data points that we want, signal strength, so um, what was this one? This was signal strength in 2.4. This was signal strength in 5. So, and there's another interesting point, right? So the one-click report is organized in, in, in this format. So it's going to go signal strength 2.4, signal strength 5. Signal to noise ratio 2.4, signal strength, uh, sorry, signal to noise ratio 5 gigahertz. Do you want your report document to be like that? Or would you rather separate them into two separate chapters? Do you want to have all things 2.4, all things 5 gigahertz. This is totally up to you. But it's with thing, it is with report templates that you can change the format of the document, and then you have to do less post-processing of that output. OK, so this was just the one-click report run on the Badger Key project. OK, very nice. Some beautiful colors in there. Keeps everybody happy. Uh, network health. Oh, yeah, not, not looking super hot there. All right, now when you install Echo How on your laptops, if you go to My Documents on Windows or Documents folder in Mac OS, let's do this now. So we'll go to Nick, Documents, Echo How Site Survey. You already have a whole bunch of report templates at your disposal. All right, so the, the, the key ones here, you can run the one click report in other languages if you wish to. Probably less exciting to this audience, but internationally, that's more appealing. But the one click, the sample dash one, uh, sorry, sample one click dash en document, this is essentially the source file of your, of your one click. It's not, the, it's not actually the source file of the one click that you run, so changing this document won't affect the one click report. But if you were to go into Ekahow and template reporting, generate report, and we then we select the one-click template, you're going to get more or less the same thing. Everybody is totally happy with what I'm saying so far, yeah? Because you all came here because you already know this stuff, yeah? OK. So why would, why would I want to do this? Because with the sample one-click document, I can start messing around with the format of this document. The most, the most simple modification that I can make is well, I don't like this cover image. Why don't, we put in, why don't we put in our own logo for this? So we can go and grab our own, our own logos like this. OK, and maybe we want to also brand the footer, uh, sorry, the header in our document. Uh, I want my document to be different on the first page, and then we go into here, and we can start manipulating our header in the template. Because every change that we make in the template is then going to be reflected in the document, right? So you know, we can make that one centered, and then throw that image in again. Da, da, da. 
maybe turn this one down. Everybody here enjoy manipulating images in Word? It's one of my favorite activities. Uh, OK, that looks good. And now, if I were to run this report template, we would get an output that looks pretty much the same as the default one-click report, except that it's going to have <clears throat> our logo into it. And there it would be up there. That's the simple things that we can modify. Do you need to understand code to be able to play around with report templates? Definitely not. <coughs> I'm not a coder. I don't, but I understand enough about this on, and you can pretty much read it, right? For example, if the project has project notes, then include this stuff, end if. So it's fairly, fairly simple stuff. If, you're, if inside your Ekahal project file you have any text inside your project notes, then this statement is true. You will get this. Do we, did we have that in an output? So then this one here, that output. Right, so this project did have, did have some uh, project notes. But you see, location was empty and responsible person was empty. And that one there was populated. I'd like to see in the future more granular if statements. So we can maybe if statement each of these. But the idea being that we can pull this document apart. Right. Where can you get your grubby little hands on more report templates? So I have a Google Drive that's shared. And you can get there by going to bit dot ly slash report templates mm, dash templates like this and this is just a google drive that's shared uh, and synced with one of the folders on my computer and every time i create a new document a new template when i'm talking to a customer uh, and I have the time to play around with the report template that they want, uh, I'll try and create it and put it in here as an example. So these are all there, they're free, take them, pull them apart, break them, let me know how you get on. Just to wrap up the warm and fuzzy uh, introduction portion of this session, I wanted to show you just a couple of the modifications to the one-click report that I have made. And they are here. So you can see template dash one click modified. And one of, the, one of the basic things that I changed in this modified document is that this, this word, actually that is not the right one. Let's open up one click modified like this. Is I've added a table of contents. Now that's not an Ekahal feature, that's a Microsoft Word feature. But if you take your template and you start using the styles, then you can create those automatically, uh, automatic repopulating the report, uh, the table of contents. Make sense? So, for example, on this one here, right click and update field after you've done the report, yeah? Because then you'll, then it'll come out looking correct. Okay, and the other thing there, which I, which I touched on was the default template goes uh, chapter 2.4 uh, and then 5, and then SNR 2.4 and 5, and network health 2.4 and then 5, right? But maybe you wanted to do it, you wanted to do it floor focused. So actually, we'll go, <clears throat> uh, sorry, not floor focused, you want to talk about band specific. So you actually have the 2.4 gigahertz chapter, all of the visualizations that you want, come to halfway through the document, and then we'll get into the five gig. So the point that I'm just trying to get across here is that you can do a, l you can do a lot with report templates. It's very flexible, but you have to play with it. You have to put some time in up front. So now one thing that we do get comments on is that it, this is not, report templates are not that user friendly, and I would agree they're not. But then there's a trade-off here between flexibility and ease, easy to use. So maybe what we need is somewhere in the middle so that you can kind of do a drag and drop template builder. That would be a nice halfway step. But personally, I like the fact that I can get in here and mess around with things. Right, now back to that Slido poll. So you guys have asked, you would like to me to talk about 
create a report template to show specific APs per AP coverage maps, yeah? All right. So what's the concept here? A customer, what they want to do is they want to, they, they've got a project, and the one I'm gonna show you is two floors, but it would work with three or four floors. And they want to look at, per AP, the access, just that single access point, that AP's impact on the ground floor and the first floor. So AP1, ground floor, first floor. And then AP2, ground floor, first floor. AP3, ground floor, first floor. Yeah? Can we do that with report templates? Yes, we can. Is it easy? No. <laughs> so let's have a look at how we will do this. And also, I'll fire up a different project for this. So we're actually going to use, I'm going to use, Per AP. This is, yeah, so this is the one that really, this, in fact, what's tricky about this uh, task is the manipulation within Word, more so, that's the complex, complex part, rather than the actual manipulation inside Ekahau. <clears throat> Here's my project. We have two floors, ground and first. It's a survey project. You can see that the surveyor has walked these paths. And we've got the access points that I'm interested in, the ones that are in my AP group. They have the, the checkbox, they're good. They're the ones that I want to produce this report document on. How do we go about creating a report template that will give me per AP, per floor visualizations? <coughs> Simply put, we need, to use an, we need to use a floor loop because we want something on ground floor and first floor, something on ground floor and first floor. So this is another one of those templates that you would be able to find in the, in the, in the, big, in the big stack here on that uh, Google Drive. But I'm going to produce a, a blog post in the next month or so that will detail the word manipulation that you need to do for this one. Because of all of the, of all of the topics you could have chosen, this one is the most difficult inside words. All right, you ready for this? All right. So here's the template that will allow me to do that process. We're gonna do a floor loop. So loop start type floors, loop end type floors. So basically we're going to, per, per section of this document, loop through all of the floors inside your project. And then within my floor loop, what I want is a title that tells me which AP we're looking at and the floor name. And then we'll have a visualization, which, simply say, which is basically a heat map showing me signal strength but filtered to include only one AP. Now the tricky part about this particular example is that I can't iterate through these APs. My template has to specify which APs that I'm gonna filter on. So that's where the, the tricky manipulation part comes in. And how can we optimize this and do it in a quick way? Now, I, I do have a bit of a love-hate relationship with Word because you can do some pretty cool things in there, especially with macros. Maybe some of you have come across the blog article that I put out a few months ago, but when you have a CAD file and you have all of that white space around the edge, and at the moment we can't crop inside a cow. That's coming, by the way, but it's not there yet. So at the moment, one workaround is you run your report, now you have a Word document, full of images where there's lots of white space around the pit of the image that you care about, there is a macro that you can use to automate the crop and resize of those images because it has to be done post-export. So you can optimize these things. It's still a bit kludgy. Right? I put my hands up and agree with you wholeheartedly, but you can speed these processes up. On this one, what I need to do now is figure out what APs I'm gonna use what their AP name is, and then I can need to put that information into my template. So for that, we have a template called Simple Table of AP Names, and this is gonna give me a table with all of the AP names in it, all right? So we'll go into, oh yeah, sorry, I didn't advance the slides. This was my first main slide, was the warm and fuzzy introduction. Now we'll get onto the main event slide, okay. Uh, where was I trying to go? I was trying to go into Echo How, and we'll run that template 
So template reporting, generate report. This time we're going to run per floor per, per AP. I want to run the simple table of AP names. Okay. And I'm not going to deep dive into what that template was doing, but it's very simple. It's just going to give me, spit out a table with the APs that are in the My AP group. This AP number over here, if you didn't like that, I could remove that from the template, but that's the AP running number. That's the, that's the individual number that Ekehau assigned to that AP, basically based on the order in which they heard, Ekehau heard of them. But we don't really care about the running number in this scenario. What I care about is the AP names. Is anybody lost? No? Everybody's good? Excellent. <coughs> Okay, here's where things start getting, getting messy, all right? So what I need is this list of APs in a CSV file, each comma separated, all right? So easiest way I've found so far to do this is fire up Excel, making it, we're not sponsored by Office uh, 365. <laughs> uh, and now I'm gonna, paste, I'm gonna paste them into my document, but we'll paste special and we'll do it as text so we don't bring over any formatting from the Word document. And then this is all well and good, but if I save this as a CSV now, it won't be a, it won't be a file that's comma separated with them all in one, uh, one row. So what I need to do is I need to transpose these values onto a single line. So we'll copy this again, come up here. Yep, we'll wait for the obligatory beach ball for every time I copy inside Excel. And what I need to do now is transpose. And what transpose is gonna do for me he says, you lot, copy over here, transpose, and then I'm going to delete that first column, all right? So now I've just taken that list and I've spread them out over one, over one row, and now we're going to save that as into here, per floor pair AP, and this is going to be AP names, and it's going to be a CSV. Save away, excellent. So let's just check that that has come out in a format that I want, and apnames.csv, this one here. So now we open that inside a text editor, and we'll see that it is all of those APs separated by a comma, no spaces. Excellent. Now in Word, back to my template, what I need to do is a complicated find and replace. We can close that one down, although, did you see that on that output, that one there, uh, there were 27 APs. That number's important for the macro. So there are 27 APs, there are the names, and I've now got them in a, in a CSV, and they're all comma, uh, comma separated values. So what we do now, we go back to that template that we started with. I need to now do a complicated find and replace on these values. This template is set up with each page so going AP001, AP002, AP003. And I couldn't find a way of doing what I want to inside Word with the defaults, uh, with the default functionality. So I found a macro that will let me do this. This is why for this particular example, I'm gonna put out a blog article so you can just copy and paste this stuff. Okay, so let's grab that, let's grab that macro, <coughs> word macro, this one here, there it is, we copy that, and we drag that into Word, so tools, macros, visual basic editor, fire up this document, paste it in, we can close that window now, and we can go tools, macro, macros, there it is, let's run it. So enter items to be found here, separated by commas. And for that, I will just provide you with an, a bog standard CSV that has all of those AP names in order. And I said that there were 27, right? So we need to grab 27 of these. So 27 AP names in the format that the template desired back to Word, paste them in there, and then we say OK. And I need to replace those values with the AP names that came from my project. 
and that was apnames.csv, this one here, and that's all of them, because we know there were 27 from the output earlier. And now this is the bit. <laughs> I say OK. And you can see that now my document has got Wi-Fi 001, and it's replaced it in the filter field as well. OK, everybody happy with that? There's only 27 of them, and I need to now just remove the rest of that chaff from this, from this template. So you can see that Wi-Fi 107, Wi-Fi 108, that was the last AP, and then it goes back to the old format of AP 028, and I would now just take all of this and remove it. Now, I think you guys are gonna, you guys are gonna potentially think that I'm lying to you if we don't run this, real, this one re in reality. So let's do that. Um, when you save the document, yeah, it's not going to uh, save the, uh, you don't want to necessarily keep the macro in there. So I've now saved that one, uh, 01 template, individual coverage maps. And so what we will do, uh, yeah, that's fine. Into here, report templates, this one here. I saved it as this one here. Okay, and now we'll let that one run for a moment. Let's have a look. Anybody, any questions on the Slido poll? Yeah, so we get over to questions. Do I have any freebies? <laughs> <laughs> will I share my templates? Yes, I will share my templates. It's bit.ly slash report dash templates. What's the Wi-Fi password? Uh, I think it's, I can tell you that. Do you still need the Wi-Fi password? No, nobody needs it? Good, well, I won't bother sharing that then. And are the templates in XML? No, our report templates are Word documents at the moment. <clears throat> okay. So far, so good. That one's gonna take a little bit of time. So whilst this finishes, I'm gonna waffle on about the copy current visualization template tag feature in Echo Hands up if you know what that one. Okay, I will show it to you once we have examined the output from this, but it's a feature that's been in Echo for quite a while, although I think it may be underutilized. When you have a visualization on screen, you can go to the reporting menu, template reporting, and the second option in that list, or maybe even the first option, but one of them is copy current visualization template tags to clipboards. Um, that, what that does is take the tags necessary to produce whatever view you have on screen at the moment and copies it to your clipboard. So if you wanted to create your report template more from scratch, then you could use the copy template tags option to, to create that. Personally, I like copy and paste from the examples. Most of my report templates have, st have started with the one-click template, and then I've taken that apart and pulled it out. A word of warning, though, with all report templates, you must be sure what you're showing and check your output, because you can produce results that are not what you wanted to show. If you have certain filters set in your report template, you'll override your project variables. So, you know, it come that there you have to be careful. With great power become, you know, comes great responsibility and that that's on you guys to make sure that your report template is going to produce the output that you want. Come on, Nick, you got to waffle on for at least another minute before this uh, this output finishes. So what what topic are we going to look at next after this one? Hopefully something a little a little uh... Yes, a question. Perfect. With your templates, how you, how you do the reporting for multiple areas, have you got a sensible workaround for that? Because if you go back to your sort of key um, example, yes. what you have is obviously the, the pontoons of the boats, and you think, well, it looks like a shopping centre next to it. Very much like Gumball, I guess. Okay. Um, but you could have, on that <coughs> example, you could have one side at next 65, is high density shopping centre. 
out on the boats or where it doesn't really matter, you, you can go 75, 80 or whatever. Okay. Now, one of the issues is if you run that report, you will get two options. Two legends yeah. at the bottom. Yeah, so how, is, is there a simple workaround on that or is it just something you're just going to suffer? So that's really quite interesting. The introduction of multiple areas was yeah. a highly requested feature, yeah. and it's very useful. But how, how do you present it? Yeah. And I don't, have a, I don't have a smart answer for you. Mm. What, I would, what I would suggest, so the, the, the simple answer to your question is no, I don't have a workaround. But what I would, what I would say is contact me. We can have a one-to-one -one session. Uh, online, and we can maybe just talk about how how would you like that data to be presented? Because I can then present that to the development team and say, this is what we have at the moment. It's not quite what we want, but maybe we could think about how we want to see that data. It's so it, it does roll up. I mean, some of the yeah. I mean, I so guess some research, 150, 160 pages. Of yes, maps. which is. Fantastic if you're being paid by the kilo, yeah. right, of report document. This is what I like report templates for, is that exact reason that you can generate that material. But I, I hear you loud and clear. I, I guess off the top of my head, my answer would be uh, uh, one way to represent that would be to iterate through your areas and say, first, we're going to look at area one, and then we'll do visualizations for area one, yeah. and then we'll move on to area two, yeah. and now we can have a different legend with a different threshold. Does that? But but let's have let's have a let's have a one to one session and, and talk it through if that's that's suitable. Yes. So is Word the only option for this? At the moment, yes. Yeah, Word documents are Word docx is the only uh, is the only solution for this at the moment. How about something like I don't know, GitLab or something that you can basically do the same and just push it to, to like a GitLab repository or something like that, then it can al always be versioned because you might have different versions hmm. and it's easier to check versions and stuff like that. Okay, again, let's have a conversation about that. At the moment, it's Word documents only. Uh, that's primarily because that's what the output is, but I don't, I, I doubt that there's a technological reason why we can't, why we couldn't look at other, other formats. I guess Word, te uh, Word uh, page breaks would be a problem, and that, that's another interesting thing with report templates is that it's actually a lot of interplay between Ekahow and Word. You know, a lot of this stuff I'm manipulating inside Word. So you want the table of contents? That's coming from Word, not Ekahow at the moment. But absolutely, let, let, let's let's have a conversation about that. All right, let's have a look. Does does this produce? Does, did this report? Did this uh, template that we just created actually give us the output that we wanted? So. This was AP1, Wi-Fi 001, on ground. And there it is. And here it is on the first floor. And then move to the next AP. Ground, there it is. And there's its impact on the first floor. So I think this is a win. I think this is exactly what we were discussing. We wanted per AP to iterate through all the floors. All right, good. And I will, put out a, I will put out a blog article on how to do that macro, all right? So maybe let's, let's lighten things up a little bit, because uh, then the next option here was report, cre create a report template from scratch. Uh, in fact, that was what I was mentioning, wasn't it? That was the copy the template tags option. So if we were to, let me demonstrate that to you very quickly. If I switch the APs off and the survey paths and the areas, so if we go to view and switch off those areas, this one here. If, if that's the visualization that you want in your report document, excuse me, and I apologize for the colors. As, as usual, they look a lot better on this screen than they do up here. But you know what it looks like, right? You know what the real colors look like. Uh, I can go reporting, template reporting, copy current visualization template tag. Then we hop over to Word, fire up a new document, paste those tags in. And these are the tags that make up that visualization, the basic things. Show contours. Here's the color, here's the color range. Uh, we're, we're viewing accuracy at super. Filter, include, owner, my APs, band 5 gigahertz. That's what we've got here. 
Now, I had, a, I had an interesting question earlier, just before the session, about can you put pictures? You're, you're happy for me to talk about pictures for a moment? Yeah? Anybody put up your hand and say no, it's fine? OK. Uh, just, let, let's just have a quick look at one template that I didn't actually plan to show you in this session, but I think it is a good example. So when you inside Ekahow, if you have your APs on, and you right click on an AP and then you edit the access point notes, you have the ability to import picture. You also have the ability to take a picture, but I, Miko and Yussi are not in the room, are they? No, I, I'm not so sure if I'm holding my laptop, I'm gonna take a picture of my APs like this, but the ability to import picture is useful. And also in fairness, some people have laptops or tablet style laptops with the rear facing camera. So then take a picture is valid. But as you saw, you see with his big mouth, can't keep a secret. And in the near future, you may well be able to use a tablet for your surveys. And then capturing images, that's a different story. Okay, but as it stands today, taking a picture, I'm gonna import picture. And I can import multiple pictures for these APs if I wanted to but then that image can be pulled out in your report template. So the example that I often show for this one is, let's have a look at the template. It's gonna be, install a handover, this template. So this template here, is a, this, this is geared around a simulation project rather than a survey project. But this, is, this, is, uh, this template I used in some of the earlier demonstrations of report templates because any value, almost, almost any value that exists inside your Echo project, you can pull out using report templates. So for the, this example, it's a simulation in a warehouse. So you've got all the, the, the data tags, project name, project location, project owner, <laughs> table of contents, loop start type floors. So now everything until we end that loop is gonna get iterated per floor. Quick overview, so floor name, give me the overview in the 2.4 gig bands, give me an overview of the signal strength in five gigahertz. But then this template was all about installer handover. And so now per AP, because you'll see here, loop start type APs, we will get this layout. So we'll get the AP image in this square. We'll get a visualization focusing in on the coverage from that particular AP in this one. And because they're simulated APs, I can pull values such as AP height, angle of tilt, transmit power. This is only relevant if you're dealing with simulated APs. If we were dealing with survey APs, maybe I would just put that information into the notes field and then I could pull it out that way. I will just fire up the output from that, if that's okay with you guys. So report, warehouse simulation, install a handover, and you have to take my word for it that I haven't manipulated this since the output. But, uh, but you can test it yourselves, right? Uh, so this is basically the output. The only thing that I've changed here would have been a right click and update field on the table of contents. But overview in 2.4, you can see our simulated APs here. Signal strength, overview in five, and then per AP, we get the installer handover. Quick loop back to my mention of the blog article earlier. When I have been on site and I'm taking pictures, I want to name that image there and then. Hands up, who's got back to the hotel at the end of the day and they're looking through their photo library and you got 50 pictures of APs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now, did I do them in the right order or did I go backwards on that day or is that? Yeah, no, I've got, they, those APs have got to be, those images have got to be named at the time you take the picture. So there's an app called File Photo or Photo Name. There's a blog article about it. Uh, simple iOS app lets you take a picture, give that image a name. It then also stores those images outside of your photo library so you don't look through your family photos and see all of those installed APs in that photo library. That's quite useful. Uh, 
the, these images, uh, they've been marked with arrows to indicate this is where I wanted the AP to be installed. This was a, this was a simulation example, yeah? There's the AP location. This is actually where I want it to be installed. So this is kind of a, this is a bit of a hybrid example because it's a simulation survey, uh, sorry, simulation project, but I've been on site as well and taken some pictures. But then you can see that I can pull out the height, angle of tilt, transmit power, and AP, and any notes that I wanted to add to that. But like I say, if you were doing this for a pre-deployment survey, or a post-deployment survey for that matter, you could use the notes field to populate those uh, tags, uh, that, that, this data for surveyed APs. Make sense? Everybody happy with that? You have to fine tune the access point locations, because sometimes. Oh, access point locations. That, I'm very happy to talk about access point locations. Yeah. No, just, uh, you, 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 you drag it to the correct place. You can be a couple of meters out. Keith's not in the room, is he? <laughs> All right, so I, I don't have a problem with dragging your APs on, on your, inside your project. Because for me, when I do a, if I was doing a site survey, essentially I'm doing an audit. The customer doesn't know where their APs are installed. Part of my deliverables to them is a map that shows you the accurate location of those APs. I am absolutely going to move those APs inside my project. Keith's argument is that this will affect the visualizations, and at the moment, to an extent, it does. When you perform a survey, we display the captured data, but there's also an element of prediction in there as well. If I heard a signal over here and over here, then I can guess what happened in the middle. But in some areas, when you move the AP location, that will affect the guess part of your data. Now, some people think this is OK. Some people very, very much dislike this feature. So that's fine. Um, I think we're going to change that in, in 2019, the way that that engine works. But I absolutely will move those APs. The way, the, the way Ekahau currently places your APs is based on the signal strength that the AP was detected at. And it's dynamic. So if I perform a survey, let's have a look at this one here. If I did my survey, switch on the survey paths. If I surveyed half of this site, maybe a few of these APs would have actually appeared over here whilst I've got auto place access points enabled. You can disable that. Uh, but when you then survey the rest of this site, the AP will move to wherever it was detected at the strongest. This is not a fancy algorithm that's going on here. This is pretty crude. This is wherever you heard the AP at the strongest along your survey path, that's where I'll drop your AP. We, there is an algorithm being developed to more trilaterate the, the location for those, for those APs. So that's something that's coming. Okay, But at the end of the day, you're using Ekahau to measure the coverage, not to detect where your APs are. I want to use Ekahau to produce my report documentation and show the customer this is where your APs are installed, absolutely. But you know, that is one of the favorite things. You know, oh, well, Ekahau, you, know, you didn't put the APs in the right place. All right, all right, we weren't, we weren't trying to. That, that, that's, not, that's not what this tool is for. That's not, this is not Ekahau AP locator. It, it's, it's for doing site surveys and looking at the Wi-Fi coverage but I also want to use it for those accurate AP locations. So answer to your question is yes, I'm going to manipulate those AP markers. Um, a quick one though, if you don't like the APs appearing on the map as you're surveying, okay, very simple. Under preferences, auto place APs, disable it. When you've completed your survey, you would end, you'd end up with a project that looks like this. You'd have your, you'd have your APs, uh, sorry, there would be no APs on your map. So you can see the coverage there. So what I would now, what I would now need to do, assuming, assuming that, let's say, select all APs and deselect from the My AP group. So this is the scenario, right? We've done the survey, uh, but actually probably all of the APs would be in the My AP group, wouldn't they? It, it would look like this. So how can we get around this? How can I quickly just drop the APs that I care about back on here? The, 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 the process at the moment, go to Actions, select all APs. Actions, remove from the My AP group. Right. Quick select. 
I'm going to select all of the APs that are putting out the SSID demo SSID 1. And you can now see that in my list over here, only the APs that are broadcasting that SSID are highlighted. You can go back to project, locate surveyed access points, only my APs. And now I will, that will, uh, oh, no it won't because I haven't selected them into the my AP group. We did quick select, I selected the APs, then we go actions, add to the my AP group, then project, locate surveyed access points, only my APs. And now using the same algorithm that we were before, signal strength, will drop those APs onto your map. But this way it will keep your project clean of APs from appearing all over the place as you collect that data. The thing is, everybody's workflow is different. So one thing that we at Ekahau need to improve upon and, and continue is just allowing you guys to use the tool in the way, workflow that suits you, but making these various uh, differences available. So I think, well, I've got 50, I've got five minutes, right? That's right. Perfect. So let's, you know what, I do want to just show you this cracking open a, a file very quickly. So maybe I'll wrap, wrap things up with that one. But creating a simple report template from scratch, hopefully you got the idea that that would be reporting copy current visualization template tags and, mess, and play around with them. Some, sometimes you want to remove lines of of, of text because then you'll use the project defaults or sometimes you want to override them. The only thing that you can't do at the moment, which is a definitely a known, it, it's, it's a feature that I want but you can't do it at the moment and that is override the signal strength threshold. So at the moment it is possible to do primary signal strength and secondary signal strength but I can't vary the threshold of that, uh, of that signal strength threshold, okay? So you say, here's my primary signal strength at leg 67, and here's my secondary signal strength at leg 67. Chances are you wanted to show si secondary signal strength at a different threshold. Now you can do it in report templates, but you need to use number of APs visualization to produce that. So in report templates, and I'm not going to go into it now because we haven't got time, but come and find me afterwards. Uh, and again, that will be, there will be a blog article about this in the next few uh, weeks, will be that you can use the, I'll show you what I mean in Ekahau. Here's my primary signal strength. Options, show me the secondary. There's the secondary signal strength at neg 67, okay? But what I actually wanted was the secondary signal strength at neg 69. At the moment, I can't pull that out of my report template. But what I can do is I can use number of APs and then change the color scheme to look like this. And two APs, make this adjustable. And then I could take that down to say 15. I think I set that up to two. What am I missing? What am I missing? Project neg. There we go. So it's not quite the same visualization, but it's the same data. Okay, the the, the color scale the color scale is not quite quite there. But um, that I need to put into a blog article, and I will share that one with you. That's just until we can override the signal strength threshold. But this also links into the question earlier about the multiple areas, because now we've got two areas, right? Like you're gonna override the signal strength threshold for which area, and it becomes very complicated to implement. And it's already unfriendly enough, right? We don't wanna make, make it more complicated unnecessarily. Are there any more, any other questions to put? Oh, well, yes, there are. Can you add photos? Yes, you can just, well, I take photos with my phone and then I'll drop them into my project at the end of the day. Um, what heat maps do you find customers want the most? It's so varied. Everybody wants something different. I, I actually, I actually 
laughed, not laughed, but I was like, why would anybody really want, you know, per AP heat maps until I was involved in the project where they said, yeah, we want it per AP heat maps. And you go, all right, fine, we can do that. Uh, but that was, that was pre Ekahau, so for me that was manual, pull them out each AP, <coughs> so l laborious. Uh, I actually think that the network health and network issues visualizations are probably some of the most useful because provided you've defined your project requirements accurately, then network health and network issues answers that question, that executive level question, does my network meet the requirements that we've talked about, yes or no? Is there a full list of loops and tags parameters? Yeah, you can, if you go to support com and you go documentation, Ekahau site survey, you will find in here template reporting. And this is a knowledge, this is a knowledge article based uh, from Zendesk and you will find all of the tags. So in fact, when people say, Nick, can you do this in Ekahau? I come to this website and I, and I look it up. So these are the types of loops that you can do. So building loop, floor loop, area loop, AP loop. Okay, so yes, this information is available. Uh, it's just on the Ekahau support page. And data tags is probably the most comprehensive list of all of the all of the ones that you can pull out data tags. And then you see like, I mean, earlier this week, the, a request came in to me was, um, the question was, can I look at the, can I, can, I, can I pull the adapter that was used for the survey out using report templates? And the answer is, the simple answer is yes, you can. Track device name will give you the name of the device that surveyed the currently iterated track. So it's all there. You just gotta, you just gotta play around with it. Uh, Let's just check the last questions because now I have gone over time. Uh, any more intelligent AP placement? Yes. Uh, any, any more intelligent AP placement? Yes. We are working on an algorithm that will use the signal strengths uh, from all of the places and then place your AP. Uh, and surveyed data by integrating with Cisco Prime. Cisco Prime integration, I'm going to just hold my hand up here and say, we're at the mercy of what the APIs can do. Okay, so that's not, whilst you know we would be very happy to integrate with all of the vendors' tools, we're talking about you know enormous <coughs> companies and their products APIs are maybe not as uh, flexible as we would like. So well, we, at the moment we do everything we can with the APIs. I don't think the Prime API is going to see much more development, but DNA Center will come with a whole host of new APIs. That is my limited understanding of the status with Cisco Prime integration. What percentage of ESS users use the one click? Uh, I've seen lots of people using one click, and I think that's fine. The, the, what, the only thing where, I, the only thing where it kind of like, you know, make, make, makes me a little bit uncomfortable is if you're using the one click report regularly and chopping out all of the chapters that you don't want, that's the, that's the time at which you should just fire up that one click template and prune it so that you can run it and get, just get the chapters that you want out of it. Use timestamps to identify your photos. Yeah, that's a good shout. Yeah, I like that. But then, w when when doing surveys, like I say, everybody's workflow is different, right? So I, I had I had reasonable good, uh, perf good good performance using the file photo name app. So I could take a picture and give it a name on my on my phone, and then at the end of the day, I can just pull them out of that application. Right, guys, I've kept you four minutes. Out over into the lunch period. Thank you very much for attending my session. I hope it was useful. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, thank you very much for your questions. And um, yeah, let's go and have some lunch. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>